Welcome to section 5.1.1 part 2 and this one I'm going to focus initially on the process that we learned in chapter uh, 4 but we're going to add the part that was missing. Remember that we said that we wanted to pick the acute angle so we're not going to pick the 90 degree angle and label the sides based on it. We're going to label them opposite, hypotenuse, and adjacent according to the criteria that we or how we said we would do that. Then we want to pick a trig equation. Now we have three. Before we only had one. And so this is my method. You may have a different, but this is the method I take when trying to pick a trig formula. I ask myself, after I've labeled the triangle, these two questions. What side do I know? Because I will always use one of the sides I know. And what side do I want to know? Once you've answered that que those two questions, it will direct you to which one of these you need to use. And we will do an example in just a moment. Then I plug in the values and solve, just like I did with tangent. Now, there is one thing that will change, and that is in those two questions, remember I said, what side do I know and what side do I want to know? If I know two sides, then I can use it to find the angle. We'll do that in 5.1.3. But for right now, finding sides, what sides do I know and what sides do I want to know or what side do I want to know? So we're going to go back to the original problem that we looked at in this chapter, 5-1. Now there's two sides I don't know, but there's one that I do. I'm going to follow the steps I picked an angle and now I'm going to label my sides. So this is the angle I'm using. And this side is the one I like to label first. It's the hypotenuse and it is always across from the right angle. The other two take a little practice, but I do it this way. What is across from the angle I picked? That side's going to be the opposite. What side is left and is not the hypotenuse is the adjacent. The adjacent side is the side that touches your angle that is not the hypotenuse. That's why I label the hypotenuse first. If I do that, if I try to find these two, I'll have two things missing. So that's why I ask the question, what do I know? Hypotenuse. Which side do I want to know? I can only pick one at a time, so I'm going to pick the opposite. Okay, so think about this. I know the hypotenuse. I want to know the opposite. Which one of these uses the hypotenuse and the opposite? Well, it's the sine formula. And so I'm going to use the sine equation, and I'm going to write it here. The sine of theta equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. I just wrote here so we could keep track of it. And let's write it the way we have been. The sine, theta is the angle, 31.5, and I'm putting it over 1, equals the opposite, the one we don't know, so I'm just going to put y here because that letter works well, over the hypotenuse. This should look kind of familiar to the way the tangent looked. And so I'm going to go ahead and solve one of these by plugging in, checking the mode first. I'm in degree. And I'm going to find out what sine of 31.5 is. It is about 0.5225. So I'm going to replace that with 0.5225. And now I'm going to do my cross multiplication. 1 times y is y. And 0.5225 times 100 is about 52.5, 52.25. So now I've got a way, I know this side is 52.25, or pretty close to that. And I can now do the same process, but this time I'm still going to use the same angle. And so all the labels are right, but I'm going to find this side, the x side. And so to do that, I'm going to use the hypotenuse that I know, 
And I suggest you use the one they give you because yours as an approximation is likely to be a little bit off. So the hypotenuse I know and the adjacent. So I look here, I know the hypotenuse, I want the adjacent, which one uses those two? Well, the cosine uses the hypotenuse and the adjacent. So, I'm going to do it up here. The cosine of my angle, 31.5, put it over 1, has to equal, let's see, I said the adjacent x over the hypotenuse, 100. Cross multiply, I get x equals, oh, I forgot to figure out what this is. The cosine of 31.5 is 8526. So I'm going to replace that with 0.8526. By the way, those of you who know how to use your calculators a little more, um, if you're careful, you can actually multiply those directly on the calculator. You just need to be really careful, and I, I'm not going to give you the warnings here, but um, if I do this cross multiplication the way I've done it here, I get 85.26, and that is an approximate answer. So this is approximately 85.26. So that's how I use the sine and the cosine to find some angles. If we have time at the end of this one, <coughs> we'll do one of the problems and some of the problems. But I want to take a moment to talk about the ways that we have to solve triangles, just as kind of a toolkit kind of an idea. One way to find it, if you need to pause this, but is to use the Pythagorean theorem. It works on right triangles where we know at least two sides. A squared plus B squared equals C squared where A, squared, a and B are the legs and C squared is the hypotenuse. Okay? We can use similar triangles, and remember if we use similar triangles, we have to prove they're similar by either angle, angle, side, 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 or side, angle, side. And one of the ways we can do the ratios is to do a ratio of corresponding sides, where like here I did the small red side with a big red side, small green side with that. Or we could do red to green, red to green this way. But there are several ways we can set it up, but we can use the, the proportions of similar triangles. And we now have a third set of tools. You could actually think of it as three, four, and five, where we use right triangle trigonometry. And in this one, we must have a right triangle, and we must know either an acute angle and a side, or two sides. And then we have these three um, ratios that we can use. We can pretty much find any triangle if we have that. So let's look at 5-5a. We've got a little bit of time. We'll try to do this. Step one, label sides. I like to start with a hypotenuse. I then usually label the opposite, and then I label the adjacent. Okay? We are wanting to find the hypotenuse, and we know the adjacent. So we need the one that uses hypotenuse and adjacent. The one that uses hypotenuse and adjacent is the cosine. So in this one, I'm going to set it up as the cosine of 17 degrees over 1 has to equal the ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. Substitute in values. Cosine of 17 is 0.9563. Cross multiply. This way cross multiplied I get 3. This way I get 0.9563x. Divide both sides by 0.9563. And I will get my answer. x equals 3 divided by 0. And I get 3.13 approximately. So that's the length of that side. Okay, introduction on the others, because that's all we're going to really have time for, if we have that much. Label sides. Here's the angle. This is the uh, hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent. Which two sides do I want use? Hypotenuse, because I know it. Opposite, if I look in my chart, that's going to be the sine. So I'd say sine 
of 25 equals, and I've got to stop now.